In this video, we're going to talk about video sales letters and how to hypnotize your viewers and make them buy your stuff. I think the most popular misconception is that a video version of your sales letter is simply you turning on the camera and reading your long form sales letter, which it is not. As a matter of fact, it's, it's quite uh, different than that. I'm not going to say it's the opposite because it's not the opposite. Obviously, uh, some of the elements from your long form sales letter can be applied to your video sales letter. but more often than not, if you were to just read an entire sales letter on camera, you'd be on camera for way too long and you'd bore the crap out of people that are watching your video. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. A sales video is not just a narration of your sales letter while your camera is on. You have to be mindful of signals put out by the images and sounds that you're now exposing your prospect to. I think the best way to get this across to you is that when you create a sales letter, when you're writing a sales letter on for a website, there are um, things that you do when you're writing. There's a voice that you write in or type in that you don't particularly use or that you don't typically use when you're speaking, when you're on camera. There are certain words. I'll give you an example right here. The, uh, the on this slide on this slide that you're looking at right now on your screen the first line it says a sales video is not just a narration of your video of your sales letter right so a sales video is not just a narration of your right that's the first sentence now if i was reading this on camera i might make the mistake of pronouncing it like this and saying a sales video is not just a narration of your sales letter see when we're talking, we don't tend to pronounce the word uh as a, but when we're reading, we do. That's just one of many words, and I know that's, that's a, a, a unique one, but there are many, many words that we typically write differently than we speak. The spoken word and it is not a direct correlation to the written word. Now, I'm not a linguistics expert. I am not a writer by trade or profession, but I am very good at selling. I'm very good at selling in all different types of mediums, including print, including web, including video, face-to-face -face in particularly, in particular, not in particularly. Uh, but the point that I'm making is that the basic principles of selling are the same throughout all of the mediums because at the end of the day, it just comes down to the fact that your prospect is human and, and it just comes down to basic human psychology and psychological triggers that you're going to that you're going to be using the medium that you use to convey those triggers really doesn't matter but there are when it comes down to the formatting the layout the way that you express yourself and you know you've heard the expression that it's not what you say it's how you say it well that's very very important and it definitely holds true when it comes down to creating a sales video you have to be mindful of signals put out by the images and the sounds that you're now exposing your prospect to. I'll give you an example with the sounds, right? Voice fluctuation. Voice fluctuation is huge. You can totally give off the wrong feeling if you're not making the, route, the right sound, meaning the envelope of the sound that's coming out of your mouth is wrong. Now, I don't want to get too technical into this, but voice fluctuation is very, very simple. I'll give you an example. As I'm talking like this, I've actually drawn you in. I'm making you pay more attention, but I'm also much more serious. I'm conveying a certain aura, a certain energy. Now, if I back up and I talk like this with a big smile on my face, I'm conveying a totally different type of energy. This is called voice fluctuation. You've got to be very, very mindful because if you associate the wrong type of sound, even to the right words, you're going to screw up the message and you're going to convey the wrong feeling. And we've learned already throughout the videos you've been watching that selling is about emotion. And if you're conveying the wrong emotion, if you're triggering the wrong emotion, even though you're using the right words, even though that, that script worked awesome on paper or, or on, on, on the website, when you're doing it now on camera, or even, even on, on a presentation like a screen flow, you, you know, rather a keynote or a PowerPoint presentation, now that you're, you're, you're literally vocalizing it, 
uh, you can you can totally screw up the message if you don't uh, say it right, if you don't actually convey the right message, the right energy. And the majority of the time, the problem that 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 happens here, people literally cause this problem because they're trying to they're trying to be too too focused on it. They're trying to be so focused on sounding right that they screw it up. At the end of the day. All you got to do is talk normal. All you got to do is sound like you. When you sound like you, when you talk like you, like I'm doing right now, when you talk like you and you sound like you, you're going to come off as genuine. And at the end of the day, genuine is going to win. Genuine is going to win. You could be the most awesomest, awesomest expert salesperson in the world. If you're not conveying a feeling of being genuine, that rookie that's just being himself and just and just explaining the product is probably going to beat you out uh, when it comes to you know tallying up the sales numbers. So keep that in mind. The other thing that's important to keep in mind, um, in mind is what are they seeing? Images, images. Um, remember, your mind thinks in pictures, and there is three things that that your that the prospect's mind is literally assembling at the point of absorption of your message they're absorbing three things they're, they're well they're they're literally kind of combining these three elements they're combining the imagery the sound and the actual content those three things and there can't be a disconnect usually we do uh, it, we, we try to make them all as uh, you know as as synced as possible right because that's how we arrive at certain feelings and certain emotions in our prospect right here's what i mean if you're talking about a sad event you know it's, it's usually best if we synchronize all the elements of the video and we talk in a sound and you know a, a softer very concerned type of voice perhaps if there was music playing right now it would be slow mellow piano dramatic type of music the imagery on the screen would be images of people that are that are sad i wouldn't be posting cartoons or posting people smiling and happy while I'm talking this way and while, you know, while I'm talking this way and while I've got, you know, sad music playing because I'd be, it, it would be a disassociation in the message. We would only do that if we're purposely trying to create what we would call a pattern interrupt, right? But uh, again, these are things that you need to keep in mind. And usually, usually, when people screw them up, it's because they're just focusing too much on them. If you're just yourself, if you just are, are just be you. You know, we when we're happy, we tend to when we're saying happy things, we tend to say them with a smile, kind of like I'm saying them right now. As a matter of fact, chances are that just because I'm talking the way that I'm talking, and just because as I'm speaking, I'm wearing a smile, even though you can't see me, it's affecting the mood. It's affecting the way that you're receiving my message. Okay, and this is what's important for you to consider. That's being conveyed. When you're doing, when you know, when you're presenting your product and your your video, uh, your your sales message in the form of a video, that doesn't happen when you're doing it in the form of a long form sales letter. Letter. In many respects, doing it, it, creating emotion in the form of a long form sales letter is much harder because it's it's harder you, you, when you can't see my 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 facial expression, when you can't hear the sound in my voice. You know, people, you may misinterpret what I mean. How many times have have you typed something in social media? Uh, maybe said a joke or somebody and somebody took you seriously because they they didn't they they, they just read what you your words and they didn't see the the tone of voice the body language they didn't see everything that went along with the message and and because of that they misunderstood right well the same exact thing happens if you don't put together if you don't synchronize all three of those things you know being being at the context or the content uh the imagery and the sound if you don't synchronize all three of those uh, or if you you know you 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 know you do a pattern interrupt, then you're 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 going to cause uh, a, a disconnect with your with your viewer. So let's talk about types of sales videos first. Now there are a lot, a lot. People will say, oh, there's twenty, oh, there's thirty. A lot of people have different names for the same type of uh, a sales video. I, there's there's just a couple types that I I would recommend that you consider for selling products online. All right, we're at the end of the day, we're talking here about kick-ass sales pages, making a, a web page. That's going to convert your your prospects into buyers. You want to convert. You want to, you want to create a high converting sales page, and in order to do that, you don't have to be a freaking PhD in in video editing or or a feature film producer. You know from Hollywood. It, you you don't have to be. Uh, so don't think that you that you do. 
Now, there are uh, just a handful of videos that I recommend that you're familiar with. First and foremost, the one that's probably most popular, the talking head videos, right? Those are generally uh, called talking head because it's the head of the subject that is in frame, it's, it's in focus in the frame of the video. So usually capture the top one third of your body on camera. I do this, uh, this sort, of, sort of sales video all the time. I literally just put my phone on a tripod and just a few feet away from me so it just captures from, from my waist up. And, uh, and, and I, I, like, I like solid background so that there's not a bunch of stuff to distract people and we'll talk a little bit more about it. The, the, the thing that, ta that makes talking head videos really, really powerful is it's a great way to establish a connection using the C principle. The smile, eye-to-eye -eye contact, and enthusiasm. When I'm smiling and I'm looking you in the eye and I'm enthusiastic about what I'm talking about, I tend to draw you in. When I'm looking down at the ground, when I'm talking in a monotonous voice, when I have my, my eyebrow down and, and I'm not energetic at all, you tend to push away. You, you're not, people aren't attracted to that. They don't want to be part of that. That's depressing. That's unhappy. Why, why do I want to be part of that? So the fact that they can see you because you're on a talking head video, you're a talking head on the screen, uh, you can make that connection. They can see the, the, the facial expression that you have is, is energetic. It's enthusiastic. They can literally see the enthusiasm. They can see the smile. You're, you're looking right into the camera. So there's eye to eye contact. So, and, and, and we all know eye to eye contact builds trust. So the smile, the eye to eye contact and the enthusiasm is very easily accomplished uh, when you're doing talking head videos. And this is something that really, really, really helps you make a connection in a way that a sales letter just never could. A sales letter can never make that human personal connection that, that you can make with the C principle on video. And this is why I generally tend to use talking head videos. I definitely incorporate talking head videos in one way or another in all of my funnels. Slideshow presentations are another form of video. And by slideshow, I mean just the same exact type of video that you're watching right now. Literally, there's no reason why we couldn't be putting our sales message on keynote slides or PowerPoint slides and, and literally record them just like I did when I recorded this video for you. And the cool thing about using Keynote or PowerPoint is that when you're done making your slides and putting your, your sales script right into the video, you can easily export it. You can, you can export the file right from Keynote or PowerPoint as an MP4, as, as an actual uh, you know, video file. Uh, the, the only issue again there is, is you're, you're going to make now the, the visual connection and, and they're powerful because you're now narrating and you're talking, but you kind of lack that face-to-face -face connection. So I like to do hybrids. We'll talk a little bit more about hybrids in a minute here, but I like to do hybrids that combine both of these ways. Now, there are other uh, types of videos. And I'm not going to go too in-depth into all the different types, but I am going to mention action videos. Action videos are recorded on location. So the action videos are like, you know, you're out, uh, you got somebody to hold the camera and they're following you as you're walking along in a beach, uh, you know, on, on, on a beach and, uh, and, and you're talking and stuff. Now, they, they involve moving shots with the camera uh, and maybe even inserting stock action footage uh, of live people, of activity. Um, the, the cool thing about these types of videos is because they're action shots, uh, the videos tend to be much more entertaining. They keep people glued to their seats. It's almost like you're watching a movie, which is a lot different than watching a talking head like a newscaster and watching a, a, a news show, right? So, you know, look at it that way. Look at it like watching a uh, an infomercial where it's an action type of shot as opposed to watching a, uh, a newscaster where he's sitting at a desk and uh, there may be some little, you know, pictures or animations being brought up on screen next to him, but it's really just a talking head that you're looking at. So um, the, the, these things, the action videos involve quite a bit more work because when you're on location, now you got to be mindful of a lot of things, your audio. So you might be on a beautiful beach and you might think, oh, it's a great idea to be on the beach. I'm going to love it. It's going to be awesome because of the scenery and the sun is going to be going down and oh my god everybody's gonna buy my product but then your audio sounds like shit because it sounds like like you know because of all the wind right and now you might think that you hit a home run because you're you're in this beautiful setting but people can't even hear your message so you've created a pattern interrupt for yourself 
And these are the things that you have to be aware of. And a lot of people that you see doing these sales videos, they, th you know, I, I honestly, I'm shocked. And I, and I look at them and I'm like, yeah, you use this awesome, amazing camera and this beautiful, you drove all the way out to this beautiful beach to shoot this footage, but man, it, it just sounds terrible. Or maybe the other way around. Maybe the audio is good because you've got yourself one of those little clip-on mics, but the person holding the camera is all over the place. And now I, I'm getting dizzy. You know, the prospect is getting dizzy. You've distracted them. You've taken their attention away from the message. And now they're focusing, trying to focus on just stabilizing the, the screen because your, your, your camera person was shaking their, their hands so much. Animation videos. This is another type of video. Um, now you can create animation videos with special software. You can hire somebody to create animation videos. The cool thing about animation, and with animation videos, I'm talking you can do cartoons, you can do hand-drawn videos, right? Uh, th those are popular as well. Uh, the cool thing about animation videos is they're entertaining, they're amusing. Uh, you could put motion and, and digital effects to images or things that have been drawn by hand, cartoons. Uh, you know, the cool thing about cartoons is they're like silhouettes. Uh, and when you're telling stories or when you want to try to really bring the um, the viewer into the story, uh, you, you can use a silhouette or a cartoon. Anybody can relate with a cartoon or a silhouette. When you put an actor or a person, it's tougher for someone to relate with that person. For example, if the actor or the subject in your sales video is a female and I'm a male, it's hard for me to find myself in that person's shoes. Okay, so I don't know if that makes sense. So uh, this is the reason that when you create testimonials, you want to have a testimonial from every demographic. You want to have a female uh, doing a testimonial, uh, an older gentleman, a younger gentleman. You want to have uh, a kid in college. You want to have a, you know, a wide spectrum of people so that everyone, every possible uh, uh prospect that's watching this can relate to somebody in one of the testimonials, right? Well, the cool thing about cartoons, animation, silhouettes, anybody can relate to any silhouette or any cartoon, right? Because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if the if the cartoon has red hair or, or uh, you know, if it doesn't matter if the skin tone is, is brown or if it's white or if it's gray, it doesn't matter. I can relate because it's a cartoon, so it doesn't matter. But uh, it, it's very entertaining, uh, and uh, you know, again, it's it's something that is a little bit more complex, though. So digital effects and and uh, you know. Um, motion graphics and things like that, but they are very effective. They are powerful. People do use them a lot, especially nowadays. You can take an animated video with some cool, happy music on it, and people just send. You know, they just tend to love it. Uh, it it's very attractive. Now, what I was talking about earlier, hybrid videos, they combine at least two or more video types, uh, like these four video types that I talked about, talking heads, slideshows, action videos, and animation videos. A hybrid will combine, you know, at least two of these, and that's what I like to do. I like to take uh, talking head videos and maybe combine them with a slideshow presentation. Uh, sometimes I even combine them with uh, screen capture, which is something that we didn't talk about here because it's not really a type of, uh, of sales video. It's more of a demo type of video, but when I'm demonstrating a website, I turn on my uh, screen flow or, you know, if you're using Camtasia or whatever it is, you just capture uh, motion on your screen. Uh, so it'll capture your mouse movements and the current screen that you're on on your computer. Uh, so I like to create videos that capture, that combine the, the talking head with slideshow, with hybrid. Uh, I don't do a lot of animation stuff. I do do a lot of keynote and PowerPoint stuff like what you're watching right now. Uh, but those are the, the, the main modalities that, that, that are used uh, when creating sales video. Let's talk about the script. Now, not everyone uh, is an expert salesperson or even has you know, a good amount of experience in doing sales to the point that they can uh, stand in front of a camera and, and spout off a really good sales pitch that can then be edited into a powerful sales video. That's, that's, that's rare. I, I, as a matter of fact, I'm an expert salesperson. I'm an expert face-to-face -face salesperson. I've, I've made millions of dollars selling products door-to-door. -door. I built uh, multiple teams of door-to-door -door sales uh, people. And, you know, even, even for myself, when I am on, in front of the camera, you know, you make mistakes, you forget to do certain, you know, having a script really, really helps you stay on point. It helps you be structured. It, it helps you um, just basically stick to the, the pitch. And I think that the problem though, the inherent problem with having a script is that you sound scripted, right? So the key is again, you know, making sure that the sales video script is not just the narration of a long form sales letter. Most of us don't speak the way that we write. And that's really, really important for you to remember. 
even if you're, you know, you've got a script and let's say you're using a teleprompter or something like that, it's important for you to not sound like a sales video script is not the narration of a long form sales letter. Most of us do not speak the way we write. You know, everything was 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 messed up with the way that I just read that. You know, the the the, the voice fluctuation was screwed up. The the syllables, the, the, you know, the, the accents, the the thing that I, it was just terrible. It was just terrible. I come off as disingenuous. I come off as nervous. I come off as I'm reading something. I don't come off as human. And you know what happens when you don't come off as you? You don't establish trust which is very, very, very important. So make sure that when you assemble your script, um, you, you've got to make sure that you're putting the elements in there that we're going to talk about in a second here. The, the elements have to be in there. There's five elements that need to be in there. But make sure that you write the, the content of the script. Make sure you write it in your own voice. Approach this more like you would a face-to-face -face conversation about your product. The script has to be constructed more like a live interaction. So if you ran into somebody in the lobby of a hotel and they asked you about their product, how would you describe it? Y you literally have to envision that scenario, that sort of a scenario when you're narrating your script. If not, it will sound too, uh, you know, too rehearsed, too perfectly written. It won't sound genuine. It won't come off like you're, like you're being genuine. Now, these are the elements that I was talking about. You've heard me mention this before. These are the components of a presentation. The introduction, the short story, the presentation, the close, and the rehash. In the introduction, what's important, the smile, the eye-to-eye -eye contact, the enthusiasm. You've got to have those things. And you, I tend to like to start with some sort of a bold statement, something to catch their attention, uh, something maybe even a challenge. Uh, then we go into the short story. The, the key thing to, com, you know, to convey during the short story phase of your script is going to be the who, the what, and the why. Who are you? What the hell are you doing? And why are you doing it? If you don't convey those things in one way or another, subconsciously, the, the viewer is going to have those questions. Those questions will remain in their mind in the form of inhibitions throughout the entire presentation, continuously holding them back. And they'll make that person apprehensive about clicking the purchase button. The presentation is the meat and potatoes. It's where you go over the features and the benefits of your product. I would always, always focus on benefits. The close. You have to have a, a distinct close, a call to action. The rehash is where I, I sum up everything that I just went over. And once you put all five of these elements, if you have all of these segments in your script, uh, you're you're going to be on the right track. Now, another thing to keep in mind that we've been trying to uh, talk about, you know, we've been literally talking about it in almost every single one of these videos, and that is you can't sell every product the same way. We talked about the difference between selling uh, gizmos and gadgets. We talked about selling physical goods. We talked about selling digital goods and info products. Y you sell them each differently. So, y you know, the way that you position the product uh, is going to depend a lot on the audience as well as the type of product that it is. But regardless of how you're positioning it or the type of product, we can generally say that you're going to have these five segments in every one of your presentations, okay? Remember to write in your true voice or else you're going to sound disingenuous when you read the lines. Be mindful of the appropriate emotion and voice fluctuation. We talked about this a little bit ago. Uh, you can say the right thing in the wrong way and lose the sale. Beware of teleprompter syndrome, right? Now, the teleprompter syndrome, there's, there's a, a syndrome is a group of symptoms. And teleprompter syndrome comes in, in many ways. Uh, for, for the, okay, so many things I can say about teleprompter syndrome. And to, to, to basically sum it all up, make sure that your eyes are where they belong to be and make sure you sound a way that's going to be natural. Okay, a lot of people don't use real teleprompters because they tend to be expensive and you don't want to take the time to build your own and you require a glass because in a teleprompter scenario, your camera is literally shooting through a glass that is scrolling your script and you're looking directly into the camera as you're reading the script. The, the, the camera is literally filming you through the glass that the script is being reflected on and because of the magic of I don't know, physics or whatever, it, the, the actual text that's being scrolled isn't captured by the camera. So the problem here is that 
if you don't have a real teleprompter, what we tend to do is we make makeshift teleprompters. We do things like just, you know, maybe a whiteboard on an easel behind the camera, or or maybe we even tape a piece of paper with some bullet points to the camera. So we're looking at that. So what, what has happened now is you get that teleprompter syndrome and your eyes are looking down or they're looking away or they're there. And, and what happens, remember, what's the most important thing in the intro, particularly, but throughout your entire presentation, you got to have eye contact. The moment you lose eye contact, it means you're not interested. It means you're not paying attention. It means that the prospect is no longer important. It means that there's something else more important in your field of vision than the person you're talking to. And that sends off a vibe that does not lead to trust and purchase in the eyes and, and, and basically in the, in the mind of the prospect. So you've got to make sure that you're looking at the, at, at the camera, at the lens, not just at the camera, but rather at the lens, the part of the camera that's recording your image. Um, the other thing that you have, uh, you know, there's several things that happen with teleprompter syndrome, but the other one is the way that you sound. Do you sound like you're reading? Are there unnatural pauses because you're waiting for the teleprompter to catch up? Are you reading too fast because you haven't toned down the speed of it? You know, there's so many things that can happen and speed is, is really, really important. The pace of the pitch is important. Pauses are very, very important. Strategic pauses, like the one that I just showed you, are very important to draw in the listener. And what happens is literally when you put a pause somewhere that it's not particularly expected, it's a strategic pause, it makes the person, huh, what uh, did I, did, why did you stop? You know, it kind of makes them subconsciously lean in a little bit. And doing that is very difficult if you're trying to stay in pace with the scroll speed of your teleprompter app. You know, so these are things that comprise a group of symptoms that make it real obvious when you're reading a script off of a teleprompter. Some people are awesome at reading teleprompters. The first person that comes to mind, the president that we all know as Barack Obama. He is very good at reading teleprompters. Uh, I think he's better at that than being president. But the fact is that if you do this, people will sense it and it will affect whether or not they buy. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to mention here with the, uh, assembling the script is remember that different things are sold in different ways. We've been talking about that in all the videos, and there are many types of video script recipes, right, that you can follow. So even though the segments that I mentioned earlier tend to be the same, the recipe might be a little bit different, okay? Consider using something like Easy Video Solutions. If you go to easy-video-solutions.com, there are a set of scripts in there actually that I wrote. There's 10 of them that you can use as the basis for assembling your presentation and your own video script. It has the, the necessary elements and components and I come at it from all different angles that will literally inspire you to create the story. Uh, and we're gonna talk about cre why creating a story is important. Let's talk about some of the tools. Production. You don't need to have expensive recording equipment. You don't need a recording studio. You don't need, uh, you know, an expensive Hollywood budget to create an awesome, high-converting sales video. Look, it just needs to look and sound good. But remember, image is everything. Image is everything. If you've got a great product and uh, you've got a great script to sell that product, but your video looks and sounds like shit, you're not going to make sales because you're not conveying the message properly. People are not willing to stick around if they can't listen to you because your audio sounds terrible. So they're not going to hear your sales message and they're never going to get to buy your awesome product because your, your recording and your audio, sound, it's terrible. Your image, you know, remember you're building a brand here and the way that your video looks is important if it's blurry if it's out of focus if it's just is shaky if it's recorded wrong not just the way that it was recording but how about where it was recorded i see so many people record videos in their house and you know if you're telling me that there isn't a plain wall a plain white wall or a solid color wall that you can stand front in front of at your house then, I, man, that's nuts. You, you've, why would you shoot your video for your sales video sitting on a bed with a, with a pile of dirty clothes behind you or in the corner of the screen? What do you think people are looking at? Do you really think they're focusing on you if you've got a cat walking around behind you? 
you know, come on, common sense. You, you, again, you're doing a pattern interrupt. They're not focusing on you. They're not focusing on the message. They're not focusing on the messenger. They're focusing on the cat. They're focusing on the dirty laundry that's behind you. They're, you know, you've got to be mindful of everything that's on the screen that's in the frame. We're going to talk about that in, in a minute. Now, when I create my talking uh, head videos, I use them. I, I, I use my iPhone, literally. So no real expensive camera. The re the reality is that with the technology the way that it is nowadays, most of these mobile phones uh, that you have, probably the phone that you have on your hip right now, has an awesome camera. The 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 you know the quality of that camera is probably just as good as any camera that you can buy on the shelf. Now, obviously, not not just as good as any camera, uh, but it's definitely good enough for web video. Uh, so I, I really recommend that you just just use that. And you can, you can get a little clip that can attach your phone to a tripod. A tripod, you can buy a tripod for like eight bucks. You know, they're, they're not expensive. You know, it expands, you know, and, and you can be, it just needs to be about three feet. Um, yeah, so I just, I just make my videos with my iPhone and then I edit out all my mistakes and stuff. I just, I just do one take. Sometimes I do multiple takes, but uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and record. If I screw up, I stop, I start again, or I just pick up where I left off. Uh, and then I just import it into my computer and put it in ScreenFlow and, and edit out all those mistakes. That's that's really the way that I produce my my uh, my talking head videos. Um, sometimes I use the teleprompter teleprompter app on my iPad, but I'm, I'm not one of those people that are good with a teleprompter. Uh, and it, it does help me stay on track, but I just hate the way that it makes me sound, you know. So I, I find that I, I, I end up doing a lot of editing, and at the end of the day when I use a teleprompter, I'm just not as happy when I just put bullets on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. Um, I, I'm, I think in my particular situation, I'm willing to compromise the fact that from time to time my eyes drift. Uh, as long as the pace and the sound comes off more genuine, what I'm saying comes off more genuine, uh, rather than if I'm, um, you know, reading a teleprompter. Like right now, you'll see I'm using these slides. I'm talking right now, but the words that I'm saying at this very moment are nowhere on the screen because I'm just using the bullets as prompts. I'm, I'm using the bullets as prompt to remind me of what I'm supposed to be talking about at the moment. I'm not using it as an exact script. I think the worst thing that you could do is to read every single word exactly the way that it is on the screen and then push through all your slides and think that that's going to work that that's it. you know there's no there's no humanity in that there's no connection happening there's you don't seem again genuine you just seem like you're reading a script um, when creating slideshows be very mindful of the template the colors and the styles they have a huge effect on the viewer just like the you know dirty clothes or the hamper or the cat walking behind you uh, have an effect on the attention span and the the emotions you know colors fonts they have effects they they do in fact generate emotion they do in fact you know there's a reason why you go to a doctor's office and the, the walls are painted a certain color they've always got little low music you know very you know soft music playing because it puts you in a certain mood you know they, they don't have crazy colors on the wall they tend to to get you all amped up right so keep in mind that that's the same exact case with the colors that you're using on your screen certain colors um, they 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 um, they kind of bring up emotions of trust. They certain colors bring up emotions of confidence. Certain colors bring up emotions of energy. Uh, so you, you you know you can actually see the studies that have been done a, a, of the effect of colors on the human psyche. And depending on what emotion you're trying to bring up at a certain point in your in your video, you can literally change the color of that slide. I, I recently uh, read a. Um, uh, something about the movie The Matrix, and I learned that when they filmed that, they had three different tints for the for the movie. And if you ever watch The Matrix again, you can see that when they're uh, when they're trying to portray that the actors are in the Matrix, the screen has a green tint to it. If they're trying to portray that they are in real life, the the colors are bright and normal, like in real life. If they're trying to portray that they are in the construct or the uh, programming world that they you know build all their weapons, it's a it's a um a yellow tint on the screen. So they did this to try to convey certain messages, certain certain emotions, certain things to the viewer. Okay, keep in mind it's not just about the the colors. You know, a lot of things when creating slideshows, you got to be mindful. The speed, the speed at which you're moving those slides, the transitions. So if if you've got an energy, if you've got a pace going, but then all of a sudden you pause because now your transition is coming in super duper slow. The next text from the next sentence is coming in. You just 
broke the whole pace, the whole energy, the whole momentum of your message. Important transition. Same things with animations and, and the volume. You know, how loud are you talking? How low are you talking? You know, a, a lot of things that you have to be mindful when you're creating slideshows and any kind of videos. Uh, keep the message and the messenger in focus. We mentioned this a little bit ago. Uh, sometimes it's cool to do a quick pan and, and, and maybe not have the, the, uh, the, the messenger in its, the focus is still the same, but the panning. Uh, so the location of the subject on the screen. So he might be on the right side of the screen. He might, he might uh, be on the left side of the screen. He might be in the center of the screen. He's in focus, but he might be zoomed in. So you might be zooming in from the shoulders up to, and then zoom out to the waist and and up and and you know again uh, doing these things back and forth keep the viewer engaged they keep the viewer uh, you know looking at the video it, it, it adds motion instead of just having that that uh, uh, newsroom newscaster type of, of environment right so remember that they can also be distracted by anything in the frame we've been talking about that same goes for audio and background noises uh, music uh, you know music is great but keep keep the music in uh, in sync with what your message is. So uh, I'll give you an example. If I'm portraying something that's bad, so if I'm talking about a problem, if I'm talking about something that's hurting them, if I'm saying something like, um, are your files being stolen online? Are you afraid of losing your identity to some thief, some hacker, someone that will take advantage of you? You know, notice the, the way that I'm talking, the sound, you know, it's like the way that I'm emphasizing my voice. Maybe the, the music that I would be playing behind this part would be darker, it would be like, dum, 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 you know, just, just uh, semitones and, and, and just darker sounding type of music. And then when I'm presenting the solution to the problem, I would talk in a different voice well introducing the solution to your problem we've just created security guard which is a product that is going to guard your security online notice that I'm happier now the way that I'm talking maybe now the music in the background will be dun, 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 dun. you know it would be happier just just uh, more joyful more energetic music because music creates emotion just like the imagery on the screen creates emotion just like the tone in your voice creates emotion and all of this should go together and the mistake that a lot of people make when they're creating uh, music or soundtracks for their for their videos is they just get one music one song or one track and they play it that one thing throughout the entire video so now that one happy tune is even playing behind the sad parts or the emotional parts or, or maybe you've got some music that's just like very you know uh for instance, I, I call it pensive music or thinking music kind of like uh you know what comes to mind when i when i hum this tune Right, so thinking music, right? I'm referring to, I didn't do a good job of it, I know, but I'm referring to the Jeopardy theme, right? So when someone's thinking or when someone's actually, when you're trying to be uh, thought-provoking, you might have a certain tone in those, you know, and you can literally go to stock music websites and look for music by emotion. You could type in the emotion you're trying to, in the search bar, you could type in the emotion you're trying to elicit in the prospect and they will pull up a bunch of songs or a bunch of tracks or music loops that you could put in the background that actually will will trigger those emotions in people so you need to be uh, mindful of all of these things when you're producing them because again like I said you could have an awesome video sales letter but you could totally screw it up if you're not presenting it right if the imagery is wrong if the the, the sounds are wrong editing and serving you know the technical part of it is also important because quality uh, it, it's not just about how, how good it looks. How, how, how good is it streaming? Here's what I use. I use ScreenFlow. It, ScreenFlow is an affordable and lightweight video editing tool for Mac. Lightweight because it doesn't have a, a, a crap load of features and buttons and things. It, it's very easy. You can open up ScreenFlow and figure out how you're using it. I mean, you read a manual. It's super easy. Drag and drop. It's intuitive. I find it much more stable and user-friendly than Camtasia. Uh, Camtasia, when you're, when you're recording, when, you know, when you're editing bigger files, it locks up a lot. Uh, Camtasia for Mac sucks. So if you're on a Mac, which you should be, uh, if you're on a Mac, I recommend that you uh, invest, you know, the I think it's like 97 bucks uh, for ScreenFlow, which is very, very affordable. Uh, and if you're on a PC, you have no choice because you have to use Camtasia. That's, well, you don't have to. There's other ones out there, but I recommend Camtasia. Now, uh, both Camtasia and ScreenFlow can be used to edit all the types of sales videos that I've just talked about. And you can create some really attractive effects and transitions and things like that using the software as well. The thing is, 
Don't get carried away with special effects. Use them as tools to break up the monotony in your video. Again, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just standing in the same position, staying in frame, uh, you know, because you're not doing an action video, so you're just a talking head, so you're literally standing in place and you're talking, that gets kind of monotonous, right? Even, in, even in a, uh, at a college level, a professor tends to walk around the podium once in a while. Uh, and, and it's important to, to do the same thing on camera, right? But sometimes if you're doing that on camera, it's very easy to accidentally step out of the frame. So it's best when you just stand in place record but make sure you capture some space around you so don't just don't have the camera like one foot away from the face from your face where you can see all your zits and stuff you know make sure that you keep the camera a few feet away so that later on when you're in ScreenFlow or camtasia you can zoom you can pan you can move move yourself you know from from left to right on the screen it breaks up the monotony zooming in to a uh to a, to, to your face is also a good effect when you're trying to stress a point. So when I'm doing something like this and I want to really stress something, I might lower my tone, I, I change my tone, I lower my volume and I start uh, uh, enunciating uh, my words the way that I'm doing right now. I literally, and, and what I also do visually at the time, I zoom into my face. This has the same effect as if you were standing in front of someone and you leaned in to tell them something really important. So you're telling them a story and you say, hey, you want to hear the best part? Check this out. You lean in, right? That's if you were in front of me and I was talking to you, I would literally lean in closer to you. Well, you can cause that same effect by just zooming in to the to shoulders up and then lowering the tone of voice. So these sorts of things are things that you can practice on, um, you know, that you can practice and, and see how they come out. You know, try it a couple of different ways. You know, practice makes perfect. Uh, you can also add things with uh, with these effects, like, for example, fly in text and and transitions. You can make it so that you're, you're going from one scene to the next. It flips or it rotates or it spins and things like that. Now, just don't get too carried away because, again, these are pattern interrupts. You want to make your, your uh, video more engaging and make it flow better, not make it to the point where it disrupts the viewer. Uh, make sure that your final audio, your final uh, file type is an MP4. There's a lot of file types out there for video. There's Flash, there's, there's FLV, there's SWF, there's MOV, there's AVI. Look, MP4. That, that's, that's all you need to know for audio MP3, for video MP4. And since we're talking about sales videos here, just make an MP4, okay? Some people will argue with, yeah, listen, here's why you should use MP4. Because it's the most universally accepted across all devices and platforms, period. Uh, try to keep the file sizes also small. You know, if you have a, a really large file size, then what ends up happening is now a bunch of information has to get compressed and streamed through the internet, through the wire that's going to the computer of the individual that's watching it. The more data that's being passed per frame, the slower that it, you know, I'm sure you've watched the video where it stops and it has to catch up in the middle. You see the little spinning wheel waiting. That's usually because the file is too big. It hasn't, the file hasn't been compressed properly for streaming, right? So a good way to avoid this is keep the file size small. Small. How do you do that? Well, if you're going to be playing your video on a, let's say, 720 pixel wide screen, there's no reason for you to record in 1080p, right? So if you're recording a huge size and then you're trying to squeeze that huge size video, all that data, that big widescreen HD camera that you got, you're trying to squeeze all that data through this tiny little 720 pixel screen on a, on a website, and then you're wondering, well, why does it have to catch up all the time? Well, your video is too big. So, Keep file size smaller so that it streams better. You'd be amazed how simple that is to fix. And uh, so many people just screw that up. Certain video players like Easy Video Suite have features that actually help you make sales. Like for example, you can have order buttons that pop up on the screen of the video, right when you're saying something like, hey, it's time to take action. Go right now and purchase this product. Like you could literally uh, you know, do a setting in Easy Video Suite that has a button, it, it, it little the command um, will trigger a little button to pop up and now they can go and buy your product. And that's exciting because when all of a sudden somebody sees the button, oh wow, it grabbed their attention, it makes them click it, right? So it, it, it elicits a response right then and there. It triggers the viewer to do something. You can do things like redirect the user to a certain website once the video ends. So well, the point that I'm making is the technology that you're using, Easy Video Suite, um, you can do a lot of things on your website using these tools that you can't, you can't do really with YouTube and, and stuff like that, right? So with free alternatives rather is what I'm trying to say. So a lot of things come into play when you're creating a sales video, a lot more than just writing the script and the words that you're you know, com composing to, uh, to sell your product.
Remember, image is everything. We talked about that repetitively through this video. Everything they hear and see on their screen will affect their decision to buy. Make no mistake about this. I hear people talking foolishly all the time about how they, it doesn't matter that they've got a bone through their nose and that they have a tattoo on their face and that they've got, you know, all this excessive facial hair and that their hair isn't combed and that they, they look like they're, they're shot their video in a pigsty. These things do matter. They do matter. And if you think they don't, you're living in a fantasy world, okay? The appearance matters. There's a reason why politicians wear blue suits, white shirt, red tie. It's been proven to work better. There's a reason why, you know, the way that a video of, of a film is composed, or the, the way that a film is produced has a direct effect on the emotion that the viewer is going to have. And that reason has to do with what they're seeing. And if what they're seeing does not appeal to them, then you've lost them. So even though the way that, you know, if, if, you're, uh, if you're subject or the person you're filming has a bunch of facial piercings and tattoos, that might be okay with a segment of the audience. But if you're trying to appeal to a broad base, you got to understand that you are literally going to isolate some people. Now, if you're targeting, if you're filming a video for a tattoo shop, then that is the audience. That is what you want to have. That is what the subject is. But you'd be foolish to think that appearance does not affect willingness to buy. Image is everything. If you go into a restaurant to eat and it looks dirty, you won't eat there. Even though they might have the awesomest food, you won't eat there because image is everything. Sales videos should only be as long as they have to be in order to raise impulse. You know, I get asked that a lot. How long should I make my video? Is this too long? Is it too short? I, I, the, the point is, did, how, you don't want to know how long it needs to be. It needs to be long enough for you to do the five things. Intro, short story, uh, presentation, close, and rehash. You have to do those five things, okay? So the video should be as long as it takes to get the person to buy. There is no exact amount of time. And some people say, oh, well, you know, I don't want to make it too long because, you know, I don't want to lose their interest. No. <laughs> Length of the video has nothing to do with interest. Engagement, entertainment, that's what it has. Because, you know what, go watch the movie Avatar. It's like three hours long and you'll be glued to your seat the entire three hours. I've found that the recipe that works for me is to educate and entertain. If I educate and entertain in all of my videos, whether it's a sales video or whether it's a, uh, a training video like this one, I try to entertain. I try to say things that are funny. I try to say things that are keeping you engaged. I say them with voice fluctuation. I say them uh, with, with education and entertainment. And that's what equals engagement. That's what I've found works for me. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope that you use these tools in creating your own video sales letters. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.